Now we have Karen Money, who runs her practice called Opticarm in Ottawa, where she offers precision tints to a range of patients. And she's going to tell us about her clients with head injury. Karen. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen here. Here we go. All right, well, hello, and thank you very much for uh, inviting me to participate in this conference. Uh, anything I can do to raise the profile of colorimetry so more people can be helped is my pleasure. I'm presenting on repeated colorimetry and how precision tinted lenses can help reduce the persistent visual discomfort and perceptual symptoms experienced by many individuals with head injury. In 2012, I began to investigate colorimetry and in 2013, after being trained in Ottawa by Professor Arnold Wilkins, began performing assessments using the Mark III intuitive colorimeter. In 2015, the Opticom Visual Stress Clinic was opened to perform visual stress and colorimetry assessments and to raise awareness of the condition and its solutions within the education and healthcare professions. In 2019, we added the intuitive colorimeter curve to our clinic. And this year, we obtained Health Canada approval for the curve as a class one medical device and receive the medical device establishment license for Canada. Our purpose is to find the optimal solution to calm our clients' visual stress. And while we have several effective solutions available, such as overlays, paper, lighting, computer software, e-ink tablets and monitors, the most effective and precise solution we have found are precision tinted lenses. Using the intuitive colorimeter and the trial lenses, we arrange for our clients lenses in their ophthalmic, sunglass, clip-on, or fit-over frames. We follow that protocol just outlined by Professor uh, Evans. Um, so all of our clients that have come in have seen an optometrist within the last year or since the onset of their visual symptoms. We have a visual stress assessment that collects a lot of information on specific visual, perceptual, vestibular, functional, and physical symptoms. And then with the effectiveness of color using overlays, determine if we should go to the next step, which is intuitive colorimetry. Once we get the precision tint in a trial lens, we use, um, we use them to find out if the client is comfortable in various light sources, like fluorescence or screens, and for clarity at distance and near. We use the Wilkins rate of reading test to find a rate of improvement for these individuals. And we've discovered over time that a tint update is required to account for brain changes due to healing, recovery, therapy, or the flip side of that, additional injury, disease, or illness. Our initial objective in the clinic was to help mothers like me with children like mine who had difficult to diagnose learning and attention difficulties. However, a local neurologist started referring his migraine patients to us and then his concussion patients. And from the success, awareness within the local healthcare community increased. We started to see more and more clients with acquired brain injury concussion, as well as conditions like migraine, visual snow, and PPPD. So the referrals are now coming into us primarily from healthcare professionals in the rehabilitation space, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, neurologists, and neurooptometrists working in vision rehabilitation. Now, submitting treatment plans to insurance companies for rehabilitation services is common within this group. So by 2016, Opticom became an approved provider for motor vehicle accident insurance and disability insurance. As well, the accessibility and accommodations departments within some public and private organizations started covering the cost for their employees. Now, the idea of using precision tinted lenses to help with visual discomfort is not new, but as people became aware of its use in neurorehabilitation, research, research groups started to investigate it more formally. In 2016, vision scientists at the State University of New York ran a small case study using the intuitive colorimeter. And in 2017, a team of researchers at the University of Cincinnati used a set of 10 color filter glasses to test the effectiveness within their rehabilitation patients. Both groups found that a variety of colors was needed to effectively accommodate their study group. And the statement here from the team at SUNY was that precision tinted lenses should be considered as a supplemental treatment for patients with MTBI and photosensitivity. 
We have been gathering a robust set of consistent data since 2013, using the same series of questions and tests. This past July, our psychology summer student entered data from 1,040 assessments on 765 clients. Specific to today's presentation, 365 were diagnosed with concussion, 112 male and 253 female aged between seven and 82. On average, we've seen people two years post-injury. However, as the general public and the healthcare providers have become more aware of the availability of precision tinted lenses, we are starting to see more people earlier in their rehabilitation journey. Nearly all of these clients complained of light sensitivity and headache. A third complained of double vision that could not be corrected with a prescription. And over half complained of sound sensitivity and visual distortions. It isn't surprising that most of them also had reading difficulties. And honestly, many of them simply avoid reading altogether. So after assessing our concussion clients in either the Mark III or Curve intuitive colorimeters and determining the optimal combination of hue, saturation, and intensity of the light source in the device, the colorimeter software identifies the combination of medical tints and the saturation of the tint required to replicate the visual environment in the colorimeter. The resulting tint uh, light transmission of one of the finished lenses is shown here in this table. So we took the lens transmission results of 364 clients with ABI and plotted them here in this scatter diagram. Because of the high level of light sensitivity experienced, half of the clients needed the addition of gray to the tint. Even so, the average light transmission, the amount of visible light that passes through the lens is 39%, letting in more light than sunglasses do, especially the darker ones that most of our clients come in wearing. So just as a side note, dark sunglasses may be the go-to for people with post-trauma photophobia, but wearing them reduces too much visual information and can lead to additional strain and headache. This second diagram here displays transmission data from 1,000 consecutive orders from medical tints um, at the lab from Sirium Visual, Visual Technologies. Now, you can see from the diagram, there's a more even distribution when the sample size is increased and includes other conditions that experience visual stress. As Bruce mentioned, most of these would have been um, children with reading difficulties and I suppose migraine patients. So the Wilkins rate of reading test was performed on 299 of these acquired brain injury concussion clients. The average improvement for this group when wearing the trial lenses was a significant 29%. Over 170 or 57 of them experienced an improvement over that 15% threshold that was mentioned earlier. As an aside, um, the rate of reading improvement with trial lens tints was 32% for our migraine clients. Now on to repeated colorimetry. So with rehabilitation comes improved tolerance of visual triggers. These clients have been injured, but they are recovering. Their brains are healing, they are undergoing therapies, and often also vision exercises to improve their functioning and tolerance of environmental triggers. And with that recovery comes the, comes the need to adjust the accommodation. For 88 clients who came back to us for a tint update, the average chromaticity, that is the color of the tint, separate from brightness, changed 4.3% over time. The light transmission, however, increased over time. As the client became more light tolerant, the need, they need less accommodation and thus a new updated precision tint is required. For the 18 clients who came back for a third time, their optimal lenses became even lighter in saturation over time. It became a regular occurrence that a client would come in for a tint update and after going through the full assessment, we would end up with the same lens combination with just a slightly less saturation of the color and a reduction or often removal of the gray tint. I made it make it a rule actually not to look at the file so I don't know what their previous tint combination is and then we have a reveal and compare and we're always very surprised with the results or happy I guess with the results. In 2018 a study by Aldrich Patel, Allen and Wilkins sought out to test the repeatability of colorimetry. In the project two examinations were performed in immediate succession on symptomatic participants. In two exams so, sorry, the two exams were performed by different examiners and on different colorimeters. The average change in transmission was also 4.3%. I'd like to add here that our clients, the clients in our study, um, have also had their assessments on different um, 
uh, colorimeter devices and by different uh, examiners over time as things have changed. So here we have multiple assessments, similar low chromaticity changes, two from Opticom and one from the Aldrich study, adding to our understanding of the repeatability of colorimetry. In conclusion, we have found that in patients with a head injury and persistent post-concussion symptoms, that the chromaticity of the tint is stable over time, the light transmission of the optimal lens increases over time, and there is an improvement in the reading rate. I, just to add here, in addition to these objective results, there are so many subjective improvements that our clients report back. Increased tolerance of fluorescent light, busy environments, computers, device screens, movement and patterns. So it's really a rewarding work. Thank you for the opportunity to share this information and in particular to Professor Wilkins for his consultations. And you can reach me at any of the information locations on the screen here today. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Karen, interesting. I have a question for Karen. What kind of neurological changes would lead to the need for a tint update? Um, great question. Thank you. Um, we have seen many clients from all age groups. So the types of changes that can happen are, first of all, the child gets older, uh, their brain grows, it matures. Um, so <laughs> their head size changes, they need new frames, they need a new prescription. That's going to be one of the uh, first things for children. Um, hormonal changes, whether that's a child or an adult, those will change the functioning of the brain and have changed the precision tint as well. Um, new injury. So some of our clients have had multiple concussions and when like the stroke that Arnold mentioned, when the brain is injured again, so is the ability to um, have for that accommodation to be effective. Um, what else? Um, some of our patients or our clients are going through vision therapy. And so they may have a prism in their lenses and that prism, they work out of that prism, it comes out and that will change the effective tint as well. So age, health, changes in the brain will lead to changes in the effectiveness of the tint. Can I, can I ask a follow on question from that? Because I'd be really interested sure. in, in Karen's and Arnold's view in particular on this, because you've both done probably more colorimetry uh, than anyone else, pretty much. Um, I've seen a few children for colorimetry uh, and adults where they seem to have two colors that help. And at the beginning of the process, you know, you find two areas, they might even be complementary, so quite different colors. Yes. Uh, and in my opinion, some, in my experience, sometimes they will choose the color, hopefully, that helps them most first. Um, but then when they come back, follow up, perhaps a year later, I suspect because the symptoms associated with the other color have become more predominant in their mind, because you've taken away one set of symptoms with one color, and now the other symptoms are, have become more um, widely experienced by them. So then the next time they come in, they choose the other color, and, and, and sometimes they kind of alternate between the two colors, successive color imageries, which I, I wonder sometimes if those explain some of the debate about uh, the repeatability of color imagery, because those would certainly muck up repeatability data. I think they're often those cases, but is it just me or have you both encountered cases like that? It's not just you. No, it's not just you. Um, I actually <laughs> had quite a, a few with the concussions where they had two colors and we tested them independently, the eyes independently, and we had a slight change from one eye to the other. But absolutely, the um, people have come in and we have either a triangle of preference. So they like sort of not just across from each other, the colors, but sort of a triangle. Um, we narrow it down to, like you say, the best one at the time. And then over time, with some of the repeated um, assessments, I have had two individuals just that I remember off the top of my head that had opposite colors. They started with the first one for the first two or three um, tints as their prescription changed. And then the last one was that initial color that they, they also preferred. So they switched to it. Um, it doesn't mean that they need both colors. One is better. And there are some things that I've done, um, which we'll leave for another discussion to supplement that, to allow both colors to be um, put into the lens. Um, but that's only in rare occasions, but it, it can be the epiphany. It can be the, oh my God, now that is exactly what I needed. To, to, to consider um, in asking Bruce's question is that 
we have demonstrated that people adapt to the color that they're, they're asked to wear. Um, you can see that adaptation uh, psychophysically in the uh, particular color they choose as being um, neither uh, a yellow that's neither reddish nor greenish. You can see that shift. Um, and uh, so the brain's adapting the whole time. So it, it's actually rather surprising that they choose the same chromatistic, if you ask me. Perhaps then as a, as a slight follow-up to that question, um, Arnold and, and Karen, um, somebody in the audience has asked, does anyone test each eye separately? Or is this chosen when a patient is stuck between two colours, as just discussed by, uh, by Bruce? Um, what I'd like to add to that is usually we test it both eyes together, but there will be times when the client will say, oh, it's so much better like this, or this eye, I'm not comfortable that way. And we do then test each eye independently. Yes. The question is whether you're going to supply lenses that have a different color over each eye. I've only actually done that once. The patient returned and had the same color in both eyes. And one has, does have to consider cosmesis. We, I, we're going to add this to our study. Uh, like we have quite a large data set here and there are maybe 15 individuals where we did this um, with the different lens in each eye. And so this will be one of our, our future papers that we'll be um, putting out information on. That's great, thank you.